So I hope everyone enjoyed their lunch. Uh, this afternoon agenda, it's about opportunities. And there's so many different opportunities that we can take advantage of here. And um, normally at this point, I would say, I'm gonna invite Clayton Jones to the stage, but Murphy's Law happened is, uh, Clayton's not 100% today and did not want to take a risk. But thanks to the technology, we are bringing Clayton in virtually. Voila. <laughs> Hi, Clayton. Hey, good afternoon, Anne. How are you? Good. Okay, we're just going to do a quick sound check there. So we're, uh, can you talk for us a little bit more, Clayton? How's the weather down there? Well, the weather here, there's snow on the ground. Um, I've got a little bit of a cold that I didn't want to share with everyone. So, uh, but thank you to technology. I'm glad, uh, glad I can take good. part in this. Are we good? Can we hear Clayton okay at the back? Okay, perfect. All righty. So a little unusual, but we had planned for if this happened, because we in our this environment that colds can happen and COVID can happen. So we change with it, roll with it, and this is what we do. So Clayton, thanks so much for still agreeing to be here. And I know Jesse, your son is here. Where's Jesse now? Just got, there he is at the back corner. So Clayton, thanks for agreeing to kind of flip on the dime here with us. And you know, your story, we had talked, um, our MPP, Mr. Clark here, and I talked about the importance of telling your story. And I thought it needed to be said. So you are my go-to guy when it, comes to, um, when it comes to rail. So maybe before uh, we get going here, tell us a little about before your life was like before Cruise, your company now. So tell me a little about that background. Well, sure. I um, actually came here from Montreal, spent 10 years in, uh, with CP Rail, the mechanical side of Montreal, St. Luke Diesel. Um, moved here when my job was transferred to Toronto and, uh, you know, I was given the opportunity to take a mechanical supervisor job for a short line railway here in Ottawa, the Ottawa Central Railway. Um, I fell in love with Eastern Ontario, moved here 24 years ago and never looked back. Um, and started into business in 2004 when I saw a great need for um, mechanical uh, services to the larger industries that deal with uh, that deal with locomotives, have their own locomotives and their own switching uh, and rail cars and their little industrial derailments. And we found a, found a great niche in that uh, in that area. Fabulous. Thanks, Clayton. Oh, we're good. There we go. Uh, so previously you shared, and this is part of why we're here today, you shared with me the history on the region and when it comes to supply chain. Share a little bit about this with the audience and why this region in Leeds Grenville is so important to not only Ontario and Canada, but share a little about that. What, what's a little history on this? No, absolutely. To get back to, uh, you know, the history of the region, the Ottawa Valley, the old, uh, the old Prescott subdivision that came down through, uh, came down through the Ottawa Valley, down through Kempville, down into the old port of Prescott. I mean, that was the original economy of Canada, you know, the, the fur trade, uh, lumber and the minerals, it all, it all came down through that, that little subdivision. And to think that, where we are now strategically geographically in uh, in canada we're not um we're not central canada for argument's sake we're, we're fairly close and to think that from the original um you know the original point in, in the origination of the uh the economy in canada over half the population is within a half within a five hour drive east and west of us um East of us would put us five hours would put us in Quebec City, five hours west would put us in London, Ontario. And it's over 18 million people. Um, Johnstown was by no accident chosen uh, for this for those reasons. Uh, we have the 401, we have the 416 County Road 2, the Ogdensburg Bridge within, uh, within three kilometers away, which opens us up to another 35 million people in the, uh, in the state of New York. So. It's a, a very strategic location, and I think it's still uh, to be recognized by a lot of industries. It is, it is starting to be recognized by some, and certainly uh, by us. Uh, we have our neighbor's giant tiger here, who uh, I'm sure 
was by no accident that they set up their uh, their large distribution terminal here, 600 square foot, 600,000 square foot, just uh, not too far from us. And I think there's others to come. And it was very important to set up a, um, you know, our kind of services, logistics and rail car services to be able to uh, not only store rail cars and do our own switching, but to be able to translate um, from rail car to truck to put us in the market quicker than we can, they can actually do from Toronto or Montreal. We are in the middle of Toronto, Montreal, two hours from Montreal, three hours from uh, Toronto, and on the busiest rail corridor in North America, which is between Toronto and Montreal, and the busiest highway in North America is between Toronto and Montreal, the 401. So it's, uh, you know, when all the stars align, it's, it's kind of hard to ignore. Absolutely. And now, but from a, um, the importance of this region and its logistics, but there are still some challenges. Tell us a little about the challenges that you uh, have seen. Uh, and, uh, and then we'll go into um, knowing these challenges uh, and the problems uh, and talk a little about crews. So let's go with that. I'd say the biggest challenges and would be the uh, nature of forest change. And so does most of, uh, most of our environment. Uh, so it's, it's been key for us to collaborate with the, uh, you know, with the municipality, with, with the province to, to get over some of these hurdles and, and to, to keep moving forward and definitely collaborating with our neighbors and trying to be good neighbors with the community and, and with other industries in the area. Excellent. So knowing that the good entrepreneur that you are, uh, there's opportunities and you say there's opportunities everywhere. And um, I think, is the mic uh, working okay? Yep, okay, there we go. Um, sure, what is what you mean by your vision uh, and what you see for Canadian equipment works and services, Canadian rail equipment works and services. And up on the screen, we've got uh, your slide in regards to that. Well, absolutely, when we, uh, when we started this project five years ago, um, Actually, yeah, 2016, um, you know, it was, a, it was a bush lot and I had been looking at uh, this property for two years previous, looking for a more favorable property to, uh, to develop. Um, gravity has adverse effects on rail cars, so we, we needed a flat piece of land. It wasn't perfectly flat, but uh, with, a, with a great deal of fill, it, it's now flat. So, uh, but certainly when we, when we started this, uh, this project, uh, customers and the railway was very, very interested. And we soon found ourselves uh, busting at the seams, uh, more customers looking for, uh, looking for service and a place to be able to transload. Um, and certainly now we have, uh, we've uh, gone into an expansion here in our phase four, five, and six, where we hope to bring in dry bulk and diversify into different commodities whether it be grain, uh, dry bulk, uh, container traffic, um, and certainly would bring a lot more, um, a lot more attention to the area. And I believe there's a lot more opportunity for other industries to come to this area. Maybe share a little bit, and this isn't in our list of questions, but you know, what was happening for some of our businesses in the region in regards to trying to get a rail car to their back door, some of our manufacturing and perhaps with Ingredion and some of the others, where they would have to go for that? Well, sure, they were, I mean, they were dealing with the railways. Um, the railways are doing their best to accommodate their customers, no doubt. Um, but their understanding the railways business model is gross to under model. Um, you know, recognizing that actually making all these different services to customers is not their is not their niche, but it certainly is ours. I mean, uh, local companies like uh, Ingredion and uh, you know Invista, Dino Nobel. I mean, their cars are coming in through. A class one railway and being switched certain uh, only so many days a week by providing the service that we provide in new in uh, here in Johnstown uh, we can centralize that service so what we've done we've we've pooled industrial customers together in one location to not only give them service one and two days a week but now six days a week through pooling 
um, their services together, their rail cars together in one area. So previously, I think you had mentioned um, that, like for instance, a company would have to store their rail cars in uh, Hamilton, was it? Previously? In Hamilton, in, uh, in Brockville, um, you know, some smaller spurs, some of them even in Ottawa, where, you know, they had to draw from different locations to, to get their rail cars together, together to go to different customers. And dealing with the railways and different subdivisions, it was very inefficient and took a lot more time, very time consuming and, and somewhat unreliable when you're dealing with different areas to try to get cars moved from one subdivision to another. This allowed them to centralize, um, centralize storage and gave them a much more control over how their cars moved and when they moved, and it made them more reliable to their customers, I believe. So this has been a huge transformation at the Johnstown location. And it's important for our uh, businesses that are using rail. And maybe tell us a little bit more in regards to what that transformation has had, uh, where you're um, you know, at the Johnstown yard and what is happening there now. Well, we, we certainly have a great deal of interest and we're um, by some larger customers, some of them US, some of them Canadian, and we are very interested in, uh, in local local businesses that do not have an actual rail service, we, we can provide that rail service for them. There's so much, so much savings in, in sending a commodity by rail car um, long distance in comparison to trucking, not to mention the environmental advantages. Um, you know, the, the rail is, is much more environmentally friendly than, than the amount of trucks it takes to move one rail car worth of commodity. So I believe we're in a, we're in a time where we can no longer ignore that and there's going to be a great deal more opportunity for us for um, larger industries to take advantage of, um, you know, a rail service that wasn't available before in the area. Excellent. Now I'm going to flip to your slide, slide about safety because, you know, we often hear about the different issues with rail and maybe talk a little about uh, your safety and then also go into uh, Jones Rail, the, your sister company there. Absolutely. I mean, safety is our top concern. We, um, we certainly held back no, uh, we didn't hold back at all in regards to safety here. This, this yard is a world-class rail yard. Um, every, the terminals that we have here are fully approved by TSSA. And I would say that the terminals here are the uh, state of the art of Canada. Uh, we collaborate with, uh, you know, the emergency response. Uh, we just had a, another session here within the last month of uh, Iraq just training uh, other industries to come in and provide them with training and familiarize themselves with, uh, you know, with, with dangerous goods that are traveling. Um, a lot of people think that big black tank cars are, you know, very dangerous. In fact, um, you know, we, we travel less than 10 miles an hour here in the yard. There's, there's really no danger of breaking open a rail car here. Um, and with the training that we're, we're bringing in to, uh, with, with ERAC, with the Emergency Response, with the RAC, Rail Association of Canada, with local emergencies, I believe it's a, we've, we've made it a top priority for, for safety and we, we certainly want the, uh, the community to feel safe with us. Excellent. And now um, do you want to talk a little bit about Jones Rail? Yeah, Jones Rail Industries is our sister company. We, uh, Jones Rail Industries designs, builds, constructs and maintain industrial track. We do provide service to the class ones, the CNs, the CPs, the VIAs, but uh, they are not our main pursuit. Our main pursuit is uh, providing service to the larger industries. Uh, we're, we're getting stretched a little more and more as far as, uh, you know, Thunder Bay, maybe even Saskatchewan to, uh, to Nova Scotia, but we, uh, we are growing. We have a great team here for uh, both crews and for JRI. I'm very proud of the employees that we have. Uh, you know, everybody makes a great deal of effort to uh, to do a job to the best of their abilities. So, uh, certainly in the area for uh, track construction, we uh, we think we're the we're the best. Awesome. Well, this is this is good. I like when people are not humble because we are great in this region. So, <laughs> this is good. Um, I'm. Going on to the next slide, it's your 10th anniversary and you aged me overnight because I didn't realize we had uh, been working together that long and, uh, uh, but you reassured me that no, that's for the entire company. So 
Um, but it's, it's phenomenal what has happened. And, but yet you're not stop. You're not stopping and growing. You're continuing to grow. And tell us a little about that and what this means for future companies in this region. Well, for future companies in this region, we, as I mentioned a little earlier, we, uh, you know, we're, we're going into our expansion of phase four, five, and six. Um, phase one, two, and three, we can accommodate up to 560 rail pairs. And with our additional phases, we'll be able to accommodate over a thousand rail pairs. So it provides more opportunity for, um, you know, American, Canadian, and certainly local customers to come in and take advantage of the services that we provide that were not available in the area before. Uh, the transloading service is certainly of, of huge significance because it's something that is not really provided by uh, a lot of a lot of companies out there. Usually, the larger industries they transload because they have to. Um, a lot of them don't have a lot of opportunity to have someone else transload for them. And that is our specialty. We, we specialize in transloading and rail car switching, providing the, uh, the locomotives and the, uh, the track mobiles and the train personnel, the engineers and the brakemen. And it certainly, uh, certainly give, put us in the forefront of, uh, you know, for rail customers and be able to provide that. So to start talking about customers coming into the area, it's uh, absolutely, uh, absolutely an advantage and an opportunity for them to take part in that. Fabulous. And I know, you know, one of the things that we talked about was there was a report done many, many, or I shouldn't say many, many, maybe just one many years ago um, by Eastern Ontario. It was one of the CFDC's uh, reports did it and saying the need for Eastern Ontario and a transloading facility. And congratulations, that has become you, and that is absolutely phenomenal. Maybe you explain what that means from the Port of Johnstown, as well as from your perspective, from the rail. What does that do for this region? Well, it's, uh, it was certainly recognized, I think it was back in 2012 when we first started that it was actually put out by the province that Eastern Ontario was in need of a, uh, you know, a transportation hub. Um, you know, a, uh, an area where we could, uh, a multimodal hub, where we could uh, be innovative and provide, um, you know, the liaison between the different modes, whether it be sea to rail to truck. And those elements are all together here in this area. We, uh, we haven't found a, uh, you know, a uh, anchor tenant to bring into, uh, into the port yet, but, you know, I, I really think that it's just a matter of time. Uh, we have a port fully, uh, fully functional here in, in Johnstown, a uh, rail yard with uh, six, six days service from a class one railway. Um, like I said earlier, all the stars are aligned and it's just, uh, it's really all coming, coming to fruition. Fabulous. That's just one of the tremendous assets that we have in this region, in Leeds Grenville. And, uh, and it's certainly uh, one of the reasons why Giant Tiger located here and we're seeing such growth in that, uh, in that industrial hub. So uh, Clayton, thank you for doing that. Are you open to taking a few questions from the audience? Sure. Alrighty, so we're going to put uh, Shelby, if anyone has a question about what's going on in Johnstown uh, with the rail from the business perspective, uh, just put a hand up and Shelby can take the wireless mic out to you. Any questions on that? Okay. You might be getting off pretty easy there, Clayton. <laughs> oh, way back in the corner. You're going to get your workout. Hang on, Clayton. <laughs> Sure. I think it's someone from Edwardsburg Cardinal. <laughs> Steve. Hi, Clayton. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I Clayton, can. Clayton, Stephen Dillabaugh, Deputy Mayor, Edwardsburg Cardinal. Hi, Thank Stephen, you very much. How are you? Good. Thanks very much. Um, when you're saying that uh, we haven't found an anchor for the port of Johnstown we have to sit down and have a little discussion on that one but the second question is 
are you planning to expand more than what you are now? In uh, into phase four, five, and six, yes. I mean, those those site plan amendments are already already passed. Um, we are looking at a future expansion to the north of us, uh, simply to accommodate the amount of traffic that we're bringing in to make it easier for CN to be able to service us. It wouldn't really uh, doesn't really affect um, wouldn't doesn't really affect uh, any one particular customer more than the other but it certainly increases the amount of um, service that we can get from CN to make it easier for them to be just to make a hook and haul a parallel, parallel service with the uh, with the main line makes it easier for us to uh, to be able to provide switching service for the existing customers we have it would certainly open up um, an avenue for a couple of existing customers like Giant Tiger and Greenfield to be able to get a much easier access to, to service, to rail service. Thank you, Clayton. Any other last questions? Okay. Zico, where she's put her jogging, jogging shoes on. Of course, the people have to be from one end of the room to the other for uh, questions. So bear with us here. Vanna's running with the mic. <laughs> I guess it'll be the front left after this one, so you can start running now. Uh, Clayton, uh, Zeke Cox from TD Commercial Financing. Uh, you and I have had conversations in the past at events, and you've spoken a little bit today about the interest of clients coming to you for improved logistics is key. Uh, secondly, that we're starting to move, and you started to get into some of the metrics that always blew my mind of as much as two to three to one, the number of cars, or I should say tractor trailers that come off the 401 that we all drove here on today, which is always an adventure. What are the external pressures on that industry that might be moving them towards rail? Is it capacity of roads? Is it labor in that market? I'm just curious what kind of external things you see pushing that type of transportation more towards your world? It's, uh, it's all of the above, Zeke. Thank you for the question. That's a really good one. Um, the things that are pushing more service toward uh, our kind of service is actually the, you know, the numbers behind, the stats behind, you know, how many rail cars, uh, how many trucks are involved in one train of 100 cars. So if a 100 car train is equivalent to 300 trucks, so sustainably, 300 trucks off the road with, with one truck. And it's not like we're looking for truck drivers jobs. We're not, we're, there's a shortage of truck drivers. It would actually displace those drivers where they're not actually doing the long haul anymore. They would be doing the short haul and actually be home with their, home with their families, uh, just like we all want to be. So it's not something that we're, we, we feel we have to sell. It's something that industries want, that truck drivers want, um, certainly environmentally to, to have, 250 or 300 trucks not traveling down the highway when they can be on rail pulled with three locomotives. I mean, environmentally, the, the gas house emissions are for rail in comparison to trucking. Trucking is 500, more than 500% more gas, greenhouse gas emissions than the rail industry. So, in our, sorry, environmentally, uh, there to, to think about this responsibly, it's, uh, it's, this is why we're getting customers turning more and more toward us. Certainly, the labor industry is uh, is is pushing those uh, pushing that along also, and just the fact that this service is now here in the industry is is a very uh, is very significant. I hope I answered your question. Z. Two thumbs up from Zeke. Excellent. One last question, if there's one. Oh, yep, Mike. Hi, I was just wondering if you, it's not freight logistics, but do you have any comment or insight on high-speed passenger rail in the corridor, the chances of it happening or what you see from your end? Never underestimate the pride of an area or the pride of a country or the pride of a province, a municipality. Um, this would be a fair question if we had a much higher population, which which we, we, we don't have. I mean, the population of Canada is pretty well the population of a large Asian city, 35 million. Um, light rail, certainly, as we grow as a nation, I believe uh, light rail will become a more significant uh, um, pursuit. Uh, but certainly right now, as Canada with the second largest land mass country, it's a great more deal of land to travel over than some of the countries with higher populations and lower land mass. 
um, it's, it's, it'll be a, quite a challenge for Canada for quite some time. Thank you, Clayton. So, um, thank you for telling your, your story, uh, what's going on in Jonestown, because it has really made a significant difference to our businesses in this region and what that means in dollars saved and also from a logistics. So thank you for doing uh, uh, such an amazing job in developing this. And for those of you that haven't driven by it, sometimes you just don't even know it's there. And uh, you can look to the left and all of a sudden you'll see a whole bunch of rail cars. And that is Clayton and Jesse's operations. And, um, and Clayton, I'm gonna give Jesse a thank you gift on your behalf. So you'll have to make sure you get part of that when you, get, uh, when you, uh, when you see him next. Uh, I hope you feel better. And um, we look forward to uh, reconnecting after this. Take care and have a great weekend. Thank you very much, everyone.